You were the only one to successfully bond with the T-Virus. To fully realize her powers. Well, now I have need of you. The old you. So I've given you back your gift. You are the weapon. But first you have work to do. The Red Queen is determined to destroy all life on Earth. This is the last that will remain of us, of the human race. It seems we're bonded against a common foe. This is why we needed you back. The ultimate weapon. A. D. N. It's headphones steel! What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my next review in my watch through of the Resident Evil films. So in this case it's going to be the second to last of the current batch of films, uh, namely Resident Evil Retribution. I only say that because there's a tentative film called Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City after the next film called Resident Evil The Final Chapter, which I guess people don't know what final means, but that's neither here nor there. Um, this review is going to be focused on Resident Evil Retribution. So overall, this movie felt a lot better than the last couple of films in that it felt like a good sequel. It felt like a lot of... It felt kind of... Not to say that it was as good necessarily as, for example, The Empire Strikes Back, but it felt like a better sequel to, for example, Resident Evil, and then the follow-up couple of films. Even the last two films combined into one felt like one film, but this felt like a good example of the Umbrella Corporation trying to come after Alice. We get a lot of, um, or we get more backstory in that we get uh, more of how the virus spread, a lot more uh, time in a, for example, or an explanation as far as the simulation goes and how um, Umbrella Corporation was able to profit off of the um, virus spreading in various parts of the world. So for me, combining the last couple of films makes sense just because we have um, Alice on the run um, after the events of Resident Evil and even the second film. So it's kind of like this, I want to say second, third, and maybe fourth. I actually have lost count at this point. but. Um, between Resident Evil and this film, whatever number of films there were, those feel like it could have been one film as far as Alice going across the wilderness to escape with the convoy, making their way to Alaska, and then learning about the um, people stored in the cryo sleep or whatever. And then this film deals with um, essentially fighting back and kind of learning more about what happened in the simulation saving um, Jill um, and then get, picking up on Ada Wong and all of that so in general I enjoyed this film a lot more than the past couple of films only in so far as it did, the stuff with Ian Glenn I still definitely like the most just because I want more of him and I kind of wanted or now in retrospect I kind of kind of wanted the past few films after Resident Evil to deal with Ian Glenn and um, his either rise in the company or what he's been doing behind the scenes and basically just more of his testing and all of that and kind of more from his perspective as far as how he's been controlling Alice either directly or indirectly but controlling her actions or movements where she goes who she connects with and all of that stuff um, so as far as some good points in the film I did like that Doom-esque style monster with the Bit, like the oversized mammoth looking thing with the weird head and the teeth and how indestructible and difficult to beat um, he was and it felt like kind of a mini boss or a sub boss prior to um, the fight with Ian Glenn. I liked the cloning facility as far as the clones of Alice and Jill went. It was very reminiscent of Attack of the Clones but with kind of a Matrix vibe to it. So in all in all good stuff there. Um, I did like the Matrix, Matrix-esque bullet ejection system with uh, Michelle Rodriguez's character as far as kind of using the matrix text effect that you see like in the end of the first matrix with 
um, Neo injecting the code into himself, but in this case, Michelle Rodriguez was inject or ejecting the bullets from her system and healing herself at the same time. So I thought that was a pretty good effect. And in general, the whole film generally played more like a video game. Um, it had a, a lot of good perspective, not perspective, but panning shots and movements, uh, development and all of that, interactions with the characters. And in general, this is the first film that really made me think that this was based on a video game or we could be turned into a video game just based on the various um, visual styles that the film presented. Um, and then the weird thing that I thought of at the end, especially after my recent rewatch of all the Alien films, was that the control technique that Umbrella Corporation uses as far as the spiders in the chest made me think that they're working on um, chest huggers instead of face huggers. So does this take place in the same universe as Alien or the Alien films in that did Umbrella Corporation potentially... Um, create the um, face huggers send them off into space and then this these um, this stuff these films take place after the fact or potentially they le they learned of the alien face hugger uh, physiology and turned it into these chest hugger type of things so in general I um, the the end of this movie game made me think about that a little bit and then I liked the ending of the film in that it was a kind of Terminator 2 Judgment Day style transition. Kind of like how we saw in Terminator 2 Judgment Day where when um, Sarah Connor is having that um, um, awake or live dream where, the, where wherever she's at turns into um, ash and explodes and all that. It's a kind of transition into the future hellscape of the terminators taking over the world and all of that so i like that and then the idea that there's zombie dragons so i'm kind of curious to see now if the next film is going to deal with how those uh, weird zombie dragons came to be or was it something that the umbrella corporation came up with like maybe they found dinosaur eggs um, or even if they turn those were transitions from hawks or something like that so now i kind of want to learn more about those creatures as well so i hope they kind of deal with that in the next movie um and of course as i've been doing i'm going into all the films blind so everything is going to be a surprise but in general this movie f went by a lot faster than the past couple of films just because in general it was it felt like it was better produced it had better pacing the visuals were nice and it seemed to have a general point of alice versus jill alice versus or saving everybody and then having to make it having to um, save everybody and then um, eventually meeting up with um, the weird agent Smith knockoff dude at the end and learning that Washington DC was supposed to be humanity's last stand so in general all of that seems to generally play a lot better um, than the past few films so not to say that the past few films were bad but in general this felt uh, this film just I don't know for some reason it, for me it generally just worked and if you look at the Rotten Tomato score it's about on par as every other film so it's not like it's any it's 28% with the critics and 51% with the audience so it's not like it's any better or worse or not much better or worse than any of the other films but it just feel like it had a point and it seemed to progress that much better and I think for me, I'm learning after this film that any of the films that develop the Umbrella Corporation um, more than they did in the prior, prior films or more than we know from the prior films generally seems to play better in my mind. So I think that's why the first one worked better because it's an introduction, the film with Ian Glenn and his medications and interacting with the Red Queen works because we're learning about that stuff and then this film because we're learning more about the how uac has become a mega worldwide conglomerate so with that being said i'm kind of that's i'm kind of hoping holding hope that the, that's what they continue to do with the next film where in that they develop continue to develop the umbrella corporation give us more of the story of what they're up to or what they did to get to this point and tie that in with Alice and her story and the various people that she's traveling with and I think that should make for a very good next film in the form of Resident Evil the final chapter um, 
So that's all there is for this particular review. So if I was to grade it, I'd probably give it about a B. Um, I'm slowly coming around to the idea that a lot of these stories could have been moved around a little bit. The, the second and third and so and maybe third film or sorry second third and fourth film probably could have been combined into um two films to split that up a little bit better and then leave the um extinction and the final chapter alone i guess and that would have made for a better more well-paced story in my opinion just because the last few films didn't really seem to progress much and it was kind of trying to play more on selling a Resident Evil film than actually doing much good and there was a lot of shots that could have been, that could have reduced the film enough to make it doable to merge those last three films so with that being said like I said the, I give this game about a B to a B minus it wasn't perfect by any means but overall it was good I like the introduction of Ada Wong the fight with Jill and bring her back the chest hugger scenes and all of that and then return of i want to call him westbrook but i know he's wrong so i'm gonna that's wrong so i'm gonna keep calling the agent smith knockoff um i liked his return so i kind of hope we get to see continue to see more of him and his interactions with um alice and the rest of the group so that's all there is for this particular review so of course the next film review in the resident evil franchise is going to be resident evil the next chapter if you're a subscriber on youtube then you can you've been get you might be getting notifications for my playthrough of max Payne one on android so look out for that review coming soon as well along with a comparison to the max Payne film the unrated edition that's on amazon prime so because I've been playing Max Payne 1, I decided to give that film another watch to see if there's a different review or different take that I can have based on my past impressions of the film. I was kind of hoping that the movie Payback with Mel Brooks would, all, would be streaming somewhere so I could include that as a comparison. Because from my memory of it, Payback um, feels like a better Max Payne film than the original Max Payne. Um, of course, if you replace the drug Valkyr with the money that um, Mel Gibson is trying to get back, and I think he might have lost a wife, maybe. I don't. I, it's been a while since I watched the film, but um, basically, he goes against uh, uh, basically what's called, I think, the organization or the company or the outfit or something like that, which is a which has a definite parallel to the Acer Corporation and what they do and all of that. Um, but my, from my memory of it, I definitely liked the, I think it had a, like a blue hue or blue tint to it. And it had that very police film noir look, um, look and feel and presentation to it, which always reminded me of Max Payne. So, and that's something that the Max Payne film didn't do. And it's a template that they could have applied to the Max Payne movie and had a much better outcome. So... In short, look out for that review coming soon as far as the Max Payne video game, playing it on Android with the Razer Kishi, along with a compare and contrast to the film. And then potentially a review of No Time to Die whenever I get to watch that. And more Halloween and horror themed movies for the rest of the month. But that is all for this particular episode. So thanks for tuning in, supporting the show, and subscribing to the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, as always, if you want to support the show, get early access to upcoming content and all of that good stuff, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at pateln01, and the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, all support links, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.